you've seen a lot of speakers. Let's talk about mistakes that they tend to make on the platform when they're delivering that you observe. Oh, just walking up and, and um, thanking everyone for being here. You know, I'm so glad to be here. This is, you know, I think you just go right into the talk. So um, I think as soon as you start in that more traditional way, people just go to sleep. So I'm trying not to have people go into the trance that most so of when I do. So if, if I introduce you on the stage and I say, you know, yada, 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 ladies and gentlemen, please, warm round of applause, Dr. Rob Pennington. You come out, clap, clap, clap. My purpose is to transform the quality of the rest of your life before 1 o'clock. So you go right into it. Right. Yeah. I like that. And that's a very, the idea of my purpose, you know, it's a, it's a you-oriented statement. You're really, you know, promising them. Right. And what happens is and they they'll react, you yeah. know. And I'll say, so how many of you think that's even possible? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen, for those of you who think it's not possible, it's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People think it's possible, hey, we got something going here. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we make these judgments in immediately about what's right or wrong, good or bad, possible for me, possible for someone else. And if I said I could transform the quality of your life, you made a judgment about that, and that's going to influence not only what you have happen here, but might influence you in the future. Because frankly, all it's going to require is one idea. So now you're talking to them and you're in it now. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, anything else you see with, with speakers you've observed, mistakes they make? Too choreographed, too self-aware of their movements. Mm. I think some of that comes from historically watching very charismatic speakers and taking apart what they do. And then if I do that, then I'll be charismatic, raising my voice at the right time, lowering my hand, moving back and forth. Um, I think it loses a naturalness. I think you could still have a knowledge of that, um, but I think it. it um, audiences are more sophisticated today. They want someone who's just going to come out and be real um, and not give me a canned presentation that's going to be exactly the same no matter who you're with. Mm -hmm. They want to have some relationship. They want to have some connectedness. That's why I'm meeting everybody beforehand. If somebody were to come to you and say, you know, I want to be really, really good at connecting with the audience. And here you are, a psychologist. You know all the things, hopefully. <laughs> yes, I know all the things. You know the answers. But if you were to rattle off as many quick ideas, almost like a checklist of things, techniques that obviously have to be done right, have to be done in an authentic way. But there are things that, you know, when you do when you do these things, they help you connect. Um, um, the wherever you're speaking is your living room. You relate to it that way. You relate to the audience as your personal guests. I think that's fundamental. Uh, make sure that you, you know, I'll go around straightening chairs. Gives me a chance to bless every one of them, too. <laughs> I'll make sure everything's right where I want it. I'll get there early enough to make sure that happens hours beforehand. Um, then I welcome everybody. And we're already having a conversation before I start. The introduction's kind of sometimes in the way. Um, and I'm open to it changing in the minute. I mean, I gave a Sunday sermon once, and I had it all down to a T. I had it written down more than I normally do. I really wanted to have a big impact. And as I'm sitting there and they're singing the song before I'm supposed to start, it changed everything. That song just opened up a whole other possibility for me, and I probably ended up doing 50% of what I planned and 50% that was about that song. Hmm. And, you know, I think, obviously, I couldn't have prepared that. And I think it, if you're real and alive and, and affected by what's going on, the audience is like, whoa, they're with you. And they're awake and want to know where you're going and how you're going to do it. Hmm. Um, and the other thing is be willing to be vulnerable. Be willing to say where you're not good and what your mistakes are, because people want to identify with you. They don't want to see you on a pedestal. You want to say, you know, I'm going through the stuff too. I'm slugging through this and that and I'm having this trouble, I'm in this trouble, whatever. And so the more you're real in that way and yet you also have something of value to share that's making a difference for you, I think that's the greatest gift you can give as a speaker. 
um, is just to say, you know, I'm, ju I'm just a few steps down the road here and I want to show you what, watch out for that and, and avoid this and, you know, like in school, an older brother, you know, don't, don't be mean to that teacher and <laughs> little things like that, I mm -hmm. think, um, make people feel good. Um, the other thing is, for me personally, um, I pray. I like to take a moment to talk to the audience before I open my mouth. <laughs> and give them the idea um, that I want to uh, communicate. And in my view of things, uh, there's no resistance to it at that point. <laughs> and then whatever resistance there may be, to me just tells me where they are and their readiness to accept the idea, assuming that it has value and truth. And it doesn't have a whole lot to do with me, or even maybe how good a speaker I am. It tells me a lot more about, uh, the, is this the hundredth time they've heard it and now it's thrilling because it awakened in their mind? Or maybe this is the first time they've heard it and, oh no, this can't be true, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, and so I'm also really looking at the audience. This is something that I didn't do early on because I, I didn't want to see the negativity sometimes. But now that I, I, I see it and it helps me see questions, it helps me hear resistance or it helps me see where they're having struggles with something and I can speak to that. And I wouldn't even know when I was doing this. My business partner once was saying, you know, Rob, you know, doing this, you did this, and that's normally not what you do. Why did you do that? And I was like, I don't know. He said, oh, no, why? And I slowed down and thought about it, and I said, well, when you were talking, I looked at that person's face, and it made me think they were having this question, and so I answered the question. And that's something that's different that you've done over time. You've mm -hmm. gotten, so, so when you see the people aren't quite, they don't seem like they're listening. Sometimes I'll just stop. I mean, I remember doing a training for a board of directors for Hospital Corporation of America. I mean, it's one of the hugest in the country. And it just, it just wasn't feeling right or something like that, you know? And um, I just had a break. I said, I don't know if anybody else is feeling this. It's just me or what, but just, I don't know, is this going okay? Are you all like up with what I'm talking about here? And they said, you know, we've been talking about that. <laughs> I went, okay, good. I'm glad I brought it up. <laughs> so what is it? So well, we're just really confused about um, wh what's your spiritual take on everything you're saying? I was like, well, well I didn't, uh, I'm surprised that it's not normally what uh, someone would ask in this huh. kind of environment. So you want to know what I was just saying, but you want to know it from a spiritual point of view. And they said, yeah, we've been talking about that. And I said, okay. Well, so I just backed up and wow. ran it through from wow. that point. And then we're like, wow, wonderful. Thank you.